in front of a packed Amelie Arena. They were lined up over three hours before this match started. Let's go. Bergen Riley to serve first for the Cornhuskers. Ella Swindle goes backside to Molly Phillips off of that Nebraska block. And Madison Skinner right on cue at the start. Really nice job by Texas covering Molly Phillips to be able to get another swing out of that for Maddie Skinner. Skinner, important to keep an eye on as we move throughout this match. You've got two freshman setters on both sides of the net. That is big time. Texas will serve at Harper Murray. Merritt Beeson, the Florida transfer, and it's long back-to-back -back points for Texas. And you see Texas go right at Harper Murray. They want to load her up with responsibility. Freshman, first time in the national final for her. They shift her out of the serve-receive position. She's now short. Beeson take two. Emma Halter is there, the libero for Texas. Back to Maddie Skinner. She drops it in, and that's an inside set that we saw from Texas. We'll see that a lot. That's Texas's bread and butter. No matter what pin hitter you see on either side of the net, they want to hang that ball inside so that their hitters can go cross-court hard angle. But it seems counterintuitive, but it works because the hitter knows where it's going, and it shortens the blocker's approach to ramp up their jump. No touch, and look at Texas go. Jarrett Elliott, a two-time NCAA champion at Texas. They did it in 2012 and last year in 2022. He's told us numerous times, this is the biggest growth during one season he has seen in his 23 years at Texas. Harper Murray will tip. Ella Swindle lays out for it. Maddie Skinner coming in, and it was not touched. Nebraska has its first point. Tight set in an out of system situation. She's trying to avoid the block, just goes a little bit too long. And a little bit of nerves, it seems, from Nebraska early on here. Something we see from Texas, they are such a good serving team. They really force you out of system. We've seen that early. Harper Murray, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, one of five freshmen to join Nebraska's program, and she dribbles over the ace. Just like they drew it up. Absolutely. Well, Harper and those fellow freshmen arrived early, so they got a whole spring to work. John Cook said that was critical for their success this year as Asia O'Neill throws down. John Cook is the National Coach of the Year, a four-time national champion at Nebraska. He said he's been a lot more patient this season with the youth on his roster, and I think his players have reminded him to do that. Well, Merritt Beeson had to sit down with him and say, please be patient with this group. It's a special group, but we need patience. Can't you tell, though, he's having fun with this year's team? Definitely. I think they're keeping him young, yeah. quite frankly. <laughs> Merritt Beeson will ask him during practice, are you are you being patient right yeah. now? <laughs> you told me you were going to be patient. We're really young. So many newcomers, so many moving parts. But gosh, have they started to click at the right time. They are playing such great volleyball. Lexi Rodriguez serving down the line. Madison Skinner looking to turn it, and Nebraska within one as that goes wide. That time, Maddie Skinner trying to turn it down that line on that inside set. Now you see the roster comparison. Four seniors for Texas. Again, 11 players who played in the national championship match last year. Nebraska has no seniors. There's only been one team to win a national championship with no seniors, and that was Pacific back in 1986. It's hard to do because you need leadership, right? And they got that in Merritt Beeson transferring from Florida in the offseason. A newcomer, but she was able to build trust and relationships really quickly, and then her teammates voted her team captain. Merritt Beeson, had she not transferred, I don't know if Nebraska would be in this position. Yeah, Beeson along with Lexi Rodriguez are the two captains, and no question, Merritt Beeson is the vocal leader. Allie Batenhorst with the cross-court kill. Allie Batenhorst challenging Emma Halter in that sharp angle. Watch her get her feet inside to this ball, catches Emma Halter high, and she can't get her platform out of the way. 
There's Merritt Beeson, number 13 in white. Two seasons at Florida before entering the transfer portal, coming to Nebraska. Nice pass from Emma Halter. They go with Asia O'Neill on the slide, and a centerline violation on Asia O'Neill. Really nice job by Nebraska here after Texas scored the first couple of points, settling in, great response. But they know this rotation is coming. Asia O'Neill known for her slide setter, Ella Swindle, the freshman in the front row. Look for Maddie Skinner out of the back row on this rotation. Beeson will serve at Jenna Winnis. That puts Swindle on the move. Winnis tipping to the corner. Beeson diving in. Jenna Winnis off the block, dug up by Halter. Winnis take three, busting through. She could be an X factor for Texas. She could. Jenna Winnis has been streaky this entire season. She played great in the national semifinal. And here is another great swing from Jenna Winnis. She gets blocked, but Emma Halter covers her. So she gets another opportunity, swings, and uses the outside hand of Bergen Riley to her advantage. And that's when hitter coverage plays a huge role in giving that hitter confidence to keep swinging. No doubt about it. Jenna Winnis spent three seasons at Minnesota. Now in her first year at Texas, a cannon brought to the championship. The number one area of improvement for Jenna Winnis is her confidence. They've been working on it all year long. Look at her get to this ball and crank that angle inside one of the best defensive teams in the country. Jared Elliott saying she's finally playing with a little swagger, and it's great to see. Morgan Riley going backside to Andy Jackson, who can be so critical, too, off of that slide play running behind the center. If you don't know Andy Jackson's name, learn it, because you're going to be seeing this for the next four years. She is so lethal on the slide. The one-footed jump approach behind the center. That is her bread and butter. Makes her extremely hard to stop. She would be the first freshman in Nebraska history to hit 400. She's hitting 405 coming into this match. Winnis goes off speed, dug up by Rodriguez. They go Andy Jackson again. She got it again. They will give her that touch. Andy Jackson swinging at that ball flat, high off the hands, not trying to go straight down. Laney Choboy, the true freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Kaylee Akana, the former Nebraska Cornhusker, facing her old team and tipping over the block goes Texas. We've talked about how good Manny, Maddie Skinner is out of the back row. We don't see this shot for her very often. She's established power out of the back row. But look at the perfect placement. What a shot by Maddie Skinner. Defense way back in the court for Nebraska. Service error by Ella Swindle. Maddie Skinner's journey is incredible, ladies. You think about it when she was a freshman at Kentucky, she was playing in the opposite, meaning she was swinging mostly on the right side of the court. They won a national championship. She comes to Texas last year, playing and helping Logan Eggleston, who was a five-time All-American, the National Player of the Year. They win a national title. She could get her third today. And her role has evolved with every single team that she has played on and she continues to deliver no matter what that role is. Becca Alec in the middle. Saved by Halter right on Swindle's head. Scrappy play by Nebraska. Missed timing to Bergmark. Bergen Riley getting offensive. Riley pushing it to Harper. Murray, tricky, tricky. Really nice play by the true freshman, Bergen Riley. Great defense here from Nebraska. Just keeping the play alive. Throwing limbs left and right. Bergen Riley dumped. So it establishes this. She holds that middle blocker with her. So Harper Murray is in a one-on-one -on -one situation and can drop that tip right over the block. First lead for Nebraska today. Going to 25, you have to win by two. Kidding me, middle blocker with those pretty hands? 
it's something Nebraska works on a lot. Every player on the court needs to be able to transition, set the ball, and then Harper Murray puts an exclamation point on it. Comes inside, beautiful crossbody swing down the line for Nebraska. Are you two setters jealous over here of Becca Halleck in that? You're not used to seeing middle blockers with hands like yeah. that, let's just say. <laughs> Swindle running Phillips on the slide. Murray in pursuit as Chilboy got their first free ball back to Texas. Bergmark. Transition is key for Texas. The coaching staff told us that yesterday. Look, we're going to dig balls. We need to stay aggressive and transition that ball. That was a big kill for Texas. Carissa Barnes will sub in the transfer from Texas A&M. Corpus Christi was a three-time conference libero of the year. And that just died right over the net. Big focus lately, especially for Texas. They had a lot of transformation to do from the beginning to end of the season. Blocking and serving have come on strong. How do we even describe what their service pressure did to Wisconsin in the semifinals? It was unbelievable to watch because Wisconsin is obviously one of the best teams in the country and for good reason, but they picked them apart. They were so out of sorts. They couldn't get anything going offensively in sets three and four on Thursday night because of the pressure Texas applies from the service line. At one point, Texas scored 12 straight points in their semifinal in set three. Maddie Skinner is ready. Another transition play for Texas, and Maddie Skinner goes OT over the top. Great set by Emma Halter to push that ball up for Maddie Skinner. Barnes going at Showboy. Rodriguez will bump set Harper Murray. Emma Halter stepping in to bump set Skinner. It's coming back over. Becca Alec was waiting. Just long, they say no touch. Texas looking to the bench. They could challenge this. Jared Elliott asking his players, and he will pull the green challenge. Call is confirmed. Texas down to one challenge. Unless we go to a fifth set, they'll get an additional challenge. Texas loses one challenge. So Bergen Riley rotates back to serve. Nebraska feels like this is one of their strongest rotations. Why is that, Holly? Bergen Riley is a great server. Wow, goes down the line, misses that by an inch. Plus, they've got a strong front row blocking system with Beeson, Alec, and Murray in the front row. Nebraska stacking all their hitters on the left. Merritt Beeson's going to take a lap around the court, get to the right side. And Texas surged into that traffic. It didn't matter. They got it to Becca Alec. Really nice job by Bergen Riley recognizing that Becca Alec was coming off of her back, right? Because that pass pushed her forward. Still being able to involve your middle, no matter where that pass takes you, is really hard for a defense to get set up. Service error by Murray. Here's Kayla Akana starting her career at Nebraska. This is her third straight title match. She played in that 2021 national championship game where Nebraska lost to Wisconsin, then won a national title last year with Texas actually had an ace on national championship point. Yes, she did. Both teams trying to stay aggressive from the service line. It's going to play a big part in this match. Whenever you talk to coaches, it's the first thing they say. We got to win the serve pass game. And when you're aggressive from the service line, there's high risk and high reward. Ella Swindle taking it over. Doesn't look like a freshman anymore. Texas is the first to 15 in a very close opening set in our national championship match here in Tampa.
nine years. That is just incredible what not just one of these programs, but both have done. Katie George called them blue bloods. They are. They've established themselves as the upper echelon of volleyball. Katie, what's sticking out so far about this match? Well, I think that we've seen Texas apply great pressure, as you see it there from the service line, just like we saw against Wisconsin. And when you make a team one-dimensional because of your serve, then you're able to set up your block against an outside hitter like we just saw. So there was a delay in the call. The up official was asking her lines judges if the ball went out and touched Nebraska first. They confirmed that it did. So that's the call point for Texas. Off the block, touch Nebraska. And in the ace, guess who? And it continues. Maddie Skinner getting it done from the service line. Sergio Garcia in the house, loving it. Look at the bottom just drop out on that ball, and it's right in the seam between the two Nebraska passers. That last block on Baton Horse. So coming out of the timeout, Maddie Skinner's ace has them on a 3-0 run. She had a record six aces in the semifinal against Wisconsin. A career high for her, no doubt. And that just misses the tape. Service error. And when a server comes out of a timeout and misses, then you say, good one, coach, that one's on you. It's like icing the kicker, if you will. It is. Icing the server. Perfect pass by Kayla Akana. Soaring, flying, Maddie Skinner! And this is what makes her so dynamic and fun to watch. Yes, she can do it from the front row, but look at this, takeoff and landing. Unbelievable athleticism from Maddie Skinner out of the back row. That is called a BIC, if you are unfamiliar with the name, and it is so fun to watch. How fun is it to set? Oh my gosh. <laughs> when you've got Maddie Skinner on the other end, it's a lot of fun. Andy Jackson looking to go off one foot. That's gonna be long. Here's Asia O'Neill, her dad Jermaine in the stands, an NBA All-Star. We could very well see Asia O'Neill playing in Paris in the Olympics for Team USA. Oh, Merritt Beeson says, look, I can do it too. The back row attack has become such an important part of the women's collegiate game and internationally. Look at this back row quick to Merritt who goes wrist away, attacking Asia O'Neill in the backcourt. Swindle to Jenna Winnis. Halter to Winnis. Bringing a little more oomph behind it. When you're playing a team like Nebraska, actually either side, hitter coverage is everything to get another chance to be aggressive. And that helps Jenna Wenis work for that kill. Coming all the way inside, you see her working inside the left hand of Andy Jackson. And we've seen that multiple times tonight already. She gets blocked and then she comes back and she learns from it and is able to get a kill. Bergen Riley is so good at that deep corner setter dump. Texas knows she likes to do that, and they still can't pick it up. Nebraska down three in the opening set. Kennedy Orr rotating in to serve. Started as a setter at Nebraska, still is, but has moved into that serving specialist role mostly this year. Winnis with the tip. Swindle backside to Molly Phillips. Bergen Riley to Harper Murray. The save by Halter. Still going. Get up to Nebraska. Swindle saves the dump. Winnis. The self coverage from Nebraska's blockers right now is unbelievable. Relentless. Winnis finishes it. What a rally! What highlight are you going to give us from that rally? I want to see it all over again. Look at the dive. Maddie Skinner 
slides her feet under that ball to stay alive. I think they called Texas in the net. Jenna Wenis able to sneak that one inside the angle. So Maddie Skinner is talking to Michelle Prater, who is our up official. Skinner is the floor captain. She's the only one that can approach the up official. So Jared Elliott in Texas just received a yellow card. That is a warning. It was actually on the assistant coach for Texas. The assistants can't discuss anything with the officials, so the yellow card has come out. Nice job by Bella Bergmark there at the net for Texas. I wish Bergen Riley, instead of going up with one hand, would have turned and tried to joust with two hands to be a little bit more powerful there at the net on that overpass. Choboy, the hustle to get that there, but Becca Alex gonna tool the block. It starts with the pass from Laney Choboy. It certainly does. Laney Choboy puts that ball right in her setter's hands, and Texas trying to go line to line to pull the pass to one side or another, but Choboy put that right in the spot where she could run the offense anywhere. Three ball back to Nebraska. Harper Murray, Molly Phillips, a wall! Yesterday, Texas was working on this, getting stuck by yourself on the outside. Molly Phillips dives into that seam. Bergmark there late, but Molly Phillips makes a huge block for Texas. Molly Phillips is a surgeon. She's so efficient with her movements, whether that's defensively or attacking as an offensive player. Great job diving in there as well. So Nebraska takes a timeout here. Texas three points away from winning the opening set. Maddie Skinner, five kills right now, and we've seen a couple of times she has come out of the back row. It is impressive to watch. We had to break this down. She covers so much ground. Watch where she starts her approach, all the way towards that back in line. She cannot cross the 10-foot line, but she travels 12 feet here starts her jump, and then look where she finishes. In total, she travels 21 feet across the court to attack this ball out of the back row, not to mention her vertical, by the way, and the velocity in which she's able to attack and hit this ball. 50 miles per hour, that thing is gunning and coming at you. And that's something that's developed as Ella Swindle, the freshman setter, has gotten more comfortable this season. Ella Swindle took over a really important big role for Texas, and she's had to find her rhythm running this offense. Lots of new hitters, so that back row attack started coming later in the season, and they've gained a ton of momentum. A lot of responsibility comes with being a setter, no matter what your age is. Imagine two freshman quarterbacks leading their team to national championships in football. That's what these two women in Bergen Raleigh and Ella Swindle have done for their teams. It is unbelievable to watch their poise, their composure, and their efficiency as young players. And one of them will be the fourth true freshman setter to lead their program to a national championship. Riley on the move. That's all that Merritt Beeson could do with it. And Becca Alec wins the battle against Asia O'Neill. Transition opportunity for Texas. They got Nebraska out of system. This ball set a tiny bit low, although Nebraska's walkers lined up. They know this ball's coming to O'Neill. Harper Murray makes a late move. I'd like a little letter higher set to Asia O'Neill for that transition kill. Jared Elliott is having a lot of words with the down official.
and a red card has been shown. So a red card is problematic because it actually gives a point to your opponent. Yellow cards, warnings often, but if you get shown a second, it results in a point for Nebraska. So now 22-21 is our score, and now we're tied at 22. And it can be a momentum killer. When you have a motion like this, it can be a momentum killer for your team and a detriment, right? And look at that serve that we just saw from Nebraska. Now you got this thing even. Texas wants a timeout. Head coach Jared Elliott of Texas showing the down referee the rotations and why they're out of rotation. And he's asking, just talk to me here. Let's just have a conversation. As we mentioned to you prior, assistant coaches are not allowed to have any communication with the officials. The only person who can have conversations and explanations given to them. Texas needs to regroup as a team, forget what's going off on the sideline and focus on what they need to do. Nebraska on a 6-2 run. Out of system. Maddie Skinner inside. Rodriguez setting up Merritt Beeson. Swindle to Skinner. Allie Batenhorst is blocked by Asia O'Neill. That's a big point for Texas to get out of that situation where there was a lot of pressure and stress. Molly Phillips and Asia O'Neill come up with a huge block. Two veterans for this Texas team. Asia O'Neill's inside left hand is so unbelievably strong. She just drops it in cross court to seal that net. It's a miscommunication on the Nebraska side. Batenhorst will get the swing off. Skinner coming in. Three blockers over there. Maddie Skinner gives Texas set point. It starts from the service line. Texas gets Nebraska out of system. McConaughey comes in and puts Maddie Skinner high, and she continues. Look at the elevation. That is over the top of a gigantic Nebraska block. Triple, mind you. All three went to block. Championship an ace this time on set point. Texas wins a dramatic set one. Boy, was it dramatic. Yeah. They're unbothered. Yes. They respond from being pushed and being challenged. We'll see how that goes in the second set. Couple of key points here. Merritt Beeson hitting negative. Allie Batenhorse on the outside pin hitting negative in that first set. Nebraska only had one block as well. Let's see if they can pick it up defensively. Nebraska had eight blocks in the first set against Pitt in the semifinals. A much different set one here in the championship. When we talked to Texas yesterday, they had some game plans. They want to go line to line on their serve and try and shorten the court and make it easier for Texas's block to set up. Harper Murray. Swindle to Skinner. Block was there to slow it down. Molly Phillips on the right pin. Bergen Riley going back to Murray. Skinner tipping down the line. Showboy slides in. And Merritt Beeson with some trickeration out of the back row. Here's a little tip on a low set. Laney Choboy gets under that ball. And then watch this ball from Merritt Beeson. Perfect area two tip shot over the block on the inside set from the back row. Just great court awareness, great vision by Merritt Beeson. The bump set to Murray. 
Swindle back to Phillips. Harper Murray, Becca Alec teaming up. That's block number two for Nebraska. And blocking is something this Nebraska team does really well. They're disciplined. Look at Harper Murray take off and get up and over in front of Molly Phillips. This ball is set inside the antenna, but Becca Alec there to close. Just a great job by Harper Murray realizing Murray at Becca Alec's going to be a little bit late to close, so she has to dive in and fill that hole until she's able to get there in time. Harper Murray, the second player to be named Big Ten Freshman of the Year at Nebraska. The first was Maddie Kubik. She's played six rotations all season, and that'll be a service error on Bergen Riley. One of the benefits of going line to line on the serve for Texas is Lexi Rodriguez, who's an elite passer. The Libro for Nebraska can't step in front of passers and cut it off. from Becca Alec. They run her on a 31. It's a gap set. So it's just, just a little bit of ways away from Bergen Riley. And she goes right between a massive block. It's so quick. It's so hard to defend and stop. I love the energy from Becca Alec. She demands the ball. She does. She has such a presence about her in the middle of the court. Such a passion for the game. Her brother plays on the Nebraska basketball team. Her sister, her twin sister, a setter at Missouri Southern. Hannah is here in the stands somewhere. There's a lot of red in here. Black touch there. Skinner working around that block. Rebecca Alec, we mentioned her, the sophomore out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Here's her brother and her twin sister, Hannah Alec, who's 5'9". Becca is 6'4". How does that happen? I yeah. have no idea. They're obviously fraternal, but that's crazy. today for Kayla Yacana. Akana going that down the line serve. That's how she finished the national championship last year going area five right down that line. Batenhorst readjusting off the block. It's going to be tight. And it's pushed out by Nebraska. This ball pushed tight to the net. Becca Alec allowed Ella Swindle to attack that ball. And look at Bergen Riley trying to go over. Ella Swindle aggressive at the net. I like that mindset. The two freshman Sutters going at it after it. They're very familiar with one another. And a service error as that one sails on Kaylee Akana, ending a 3 0 run. Lexi Rodriguez, the two-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, averaging almost four digs per set in the tournament. She's a first-team All-American this year. This handle ball just trying to get it over the net. Service pressure there by Lexi Rodriguez of Nebraska, causing some problems for Texas. System set coming to Maddie Skinner. Triple block, but Marin Be Marin Beeson ate it all up. And this is what happens when you force a team out of system. The blockers know exactly where this ball is going. It's going to Maddie Skinner, and you're able to send all three up. And Merritt Beeson absolutely loves getting that block. Now a 3-0 run for Nebraska. Asia O'Neill on the slide. And she gets it done on the tip. I don't 
also like to mention, do you know how much respect Nebraska has for Maddie Skinner to throw three blockers up at her on that outside pin? A ton. Texas talked about jamming the middle of the court, throwing that ball in the middle because they believe that Nebraska plays on the perimeter defensively behind the block. Allie Batenhorst trying to go line, but turned it too much. That time, Lexi Rodriguez got a chance to pass that ball, kept Nebraska in system. That's just an unforced hitting error for Nebraska. Allie Batenhorst has had to step up and fill that spot of Lindsey Krause, who has not played since October 14th. She's been out with an ankle injury. And Batenhorst has handled it well. And the Halter coming in with the pancake. It was touched by Texas Point, Nebraska. Good aggressive throw down at the net by Nebraska, capitalizing on that opportunity. The Nebraska team that has accomplished so much this season, their most wins since 2006, when they also had 33 on the season, their first Big Ten title since 2017, looking for a national championship. Andy Jackson, don't forget it. It's freshman on freshman crime right there. Andy Jackson recognizing that Ella Swindle is up. It's a tight pass. She's all over it. She stays home, presses, gets the block. Watch Maddie Skinner out of the back row in this rotation. Asia O'Neill's going to go slide behind the setter. Nice serve. It's going to send Texas scrambling. And it gets Nebraska a free ball back. They don't call them free for nothing. And you have to score on a free ball, but Merritt Beeson set up that whole play with the tough serve, and then look at Harper Murray get on that ball so fast. Texas calls a timeout. Nebraska with the momentum. Three straight points for the Huskers. Well, and Bergen Riley was on varsity in the eighth grade. She knows how to step up and play at the elite level. She told us when she was 13, she was playing up with the 18-year-olds. Can you believe that? Yes. <laughs> Watching her now, absolutely. Misconnection, but hey, Maddie Skinner, crafty. Crafty, that sets a little bit too low. Maddie Skinner kind of had that runway going, but... She didn't get the same elevation, but finishes with the same result. A little finesse shot over the block. I'd say on the Texas side, when it comes to Ella Swindle and her hitters, we've seen such an evolution. Because Ella Swindle's had to change her setting. She mostly sets on the ground, does not jump. That's actually helped her set behind better. Here's Winnis tipping around the triple block. Good point by you. I like that location by Jenna Winnis right over the block, but we'll talk about the setter location after that. Look at the triple block and Winnis. Little finesse shot over the block. Ellis Swindle has been managing a lower leg injury, so she's had to adjust her setting, and you'll see her mostly set from the ground, and her location has improved dramatically because she has to work to get her feet to the ball. Yeah, it's interesting. Most setters would prefer to jump set. It gives you a really nice rhythm when you get to the ball and power. But unfortunately, because of the injury that she's been nursing, they had to transition her back to staying on the floor so she does not jump set. She said it was a really hard transition to kind of rework where her location needed to be for these hitters, but they've actually benefited from it. On ace for Texas. That's six aces for the Longhorns. Every time Asia O'Neill extends those arms, all I can think is Russell Crowe. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Step in the gladiator ring, baby. Time out. And so she's got all her options at her disposal. Well, somebody else will have to step up, and they are going to serve away from Lexi Rodriguez all day long. Three in a row. 
Attacking that scene between Batenhorst and Harper Murray, and it's paying off for Texas enough pace to be disruptive. And you see Merritt Beeson getting her team together, calming them down, talking it through, being that leader that this team has relied on through the entirety of this season. One proud dad. Asia O'Neill came back her sixth year for a reason. She wanted that. She is stepping up. Look at that serve. Flat and clean. Lots of pace on it. Pays off with an ace. And it ties her career high. Four aces. Bain Horse is able to get a swing off. Skinner, back row. For the Longhorns. And all the momentum is with Texas right now because they know they've got these passers on the ropes. Great job by Texas and Ellis Wendell recognizing I've got another option here. I'm going to just flip this ball behind, get Maddie Skinner in a one on one situation. And now we've got a substitution here on Nebraska side. Yeah, Hayden Kubik is going to come in. She has played in nine sets on the season as Nebraska tries to shore up some passing. Number 11 in white. And they'll serve right at her. Morgan Riley has to hustle all the way across the court. Cubic again. Beeson. Dug by Akana. And Cubic is blocked. Della Swindle and Bella Bergmark. Texas is relentless. They are going who's ever in that position, putting all sorts of pressure. Ella Swindle right there with Bella Bergmark on the Texas block. Allie Batenhorst checks back in, back row to pass, and then she'll swing on the outside pin. John Cook just wanted to have a quick conversation with her on the sidelines. Yeah, so 14 and wide, Allie Batenhorst back in the match. Andy Jackson on the slide, no! I think Nebraska needs to attack out of the back row as an option, stress out Texas a little bit more. Look at Bella Bergmark late, but Jenna Winnis all over that ball defensively at the net. And now it's in this set, Texas on a 9-0 run with Asia O'Neill behind the service line. But Riley is going to try to dump. Texas was ready. Jenna Winnis coming in. Yes, dropped it in the back row. Texas knew what was coming on that last play. Akana just was stepped into the middle, knew that setter attack was coming because Bergen Riley was in the front row and they are stuck in this rotation. 10 0 run, four aces during this run, all in a row. This serve gets a free ball back to Texas. Skinner, back row, boom! This has been a dominant run from Texas. Ellis Wendell knows she's got a third option in Maddie Skinner, and it is a great one coming right up the middle. Love a good bird's eye view. Yeah, beautiful angle from our crew. 11-0 run that matches the run they went on in the semifinals against Wisconsin in set three. And that will be why the break that Nebraska was hoping for. Yeah, and Lexi Rodriguez passed that ball perfectly. Finally, she was targeted or she was able to steal from one of her teammates to put that ball on Bergen Riley's head so they could run out of it. And then it results in an error from Texas. Maisie Bosiger coming in to serve for the first time. Did not see her in the semifinal. Skinner, this time behind Swindle, out of the back. Harper Murray dug by Halter. Ella Swindle is late to change directions and get there. I would have loved to see Akana, Kayleigh Akana, step in and transition that ball. But as a setter, you have to yell help so somebody can step in and help you. A really nice response and swing from Harper Murray and this Nebraska team.
Linus had to slow up her approach. Harper Murray inside on the set. Ella Swindle dug up by Lexi Rodriguez with one hand. Halter gets there. Lexi Rodriguez making all the effort to get to that ball. We need to see more of Lexi Rodriguez. Look at her slide in, pick up that ball in the middle. And then Riley going to her knees to put up a great set. Mariana Singletary has entered the match for Texas number 11 in burnt orange. She'll swing out of the middle. Wendis finds the deep corner. Didn't make great hand contact with that ball, but deep corner is a good location to attack, especially against this Nebraska team. If, I, if I'm Nebraska, I think Lexi Rodriguez, the Libro, needs to take more court and serve receive. Slide Harper Murray over. She needs to insert herself into this match. Almost shadow her, right? Yeah. Pass two with Laney Choboy. Cover as much ground as you can. Rodriguez will bump set Murray. Swing is long. Nebraska wants a touch. And John Cook does have the green challenge card in his hand. So for the first time today, Nebraska will use a challenge. If they're correct, they get to keep it. Harper Murray immediately turning to John Cook after that swing. There was a... So they stick with the original call, Nebraska down to one challenge, unless we go to a fifth set. The same for Texas. Each team with one challenge. If we go to a fifth, they'll get an additional challenge. Ellis Wendell on the serve. Nine aces right now for Texas. Incredible the accuracy of their serve. They're not serving right at the Nebraska passers. They're making the move, attacking seams. Showboy is an excellent passer for Nebraska, and that one gets away from her. Six aces in this set alone for Texas. Seven. It, it's incredible, and every Texas player is doing it from the service line. Last match, it was mostly Maddie Skinner, but now Ella Swindle. Lady Choboy is going to be subbed out. Maisie Bosiger comes back in, number seven in white. Are you seeing Texas do the same thing, yo-yoing the serve? Definitely. They're just mixing it up with the depth of the serves. Rodriguez is able to pass there. They go to Herbert Murray. Andy Jackson off of one foot wide and no touch. And this is similar to what we saw Texas do to Wisconsin on Thursday night. They completely took them out of their serve receive and passing options and therefore they weren't able to attack and run anything efficiently out of it. It's pretty amazing that they can pick apart an offense like this. Beeson gets the out-of-system swing. Molly Phillips reaching for it. Lexi Rodriguez with the dive. Phillips again. Winnis off the block and out. Set point, Texas. Watch this ball here in transition. Wendis gets blocked, and look at Maddie Skinner from left back chase this ball going just wide. All out effort to keep that ball off the floor. A 5 0 6 0 run now for Texas. <laughs> Service error still set point Longhorns.
Harper marking the middle with her left hand. Harper Murray. Long and Texas dominates set two. 15 to four run to end the set. They had seven aces. In the team captain hitting zero in the match. It's incredible, but when a team's out of system, it's hard to score against a strong defensive team. A must win set for Nebraska or Texas takes home the title. Maddie Skinner. Power tip. She's just so high in the air. She elevates and jumps so well that she's able to go over top of the block and throw down into the donut, that center area where the defenders are not. And that was one of the plans from Texas. Mm -hmm. They want to attack that middle. There's Lexi Rodriguez stepping in to pass. Skinner rolls over the block and it drops. Maddie Skinner with 12 kills. She's got the Midas touch, right? A finesse shot. We've seen her dink to open court. I mean, incredible choice to change it up. And Becca Alec able to touch that defensively, but not play it up for Nebraska. Alec in the middle. Skinner off hands. Maddie Skinner wants a third national championship. Well, Texas can feel it. They've got momentum. They are doing things the right way in good spots defensively. But transition offense was the key for Texas when we talked to them yesterday. And you see it paying off now. Harper Murray, it was touched, Point Nebraska. Nice job by Lexi Rodriguez stepping in there on that second contact and putting Harper Murray in a good position to be able to take a full swing on the outside. Out of system swing for Texas. It goes to Skinner and she turns it wide. Nebraska picking things up from the service line. Maddie Skinner took a good swing, just missing that one wide. John Cook has talked about unbothered with this team. It was a conversation they started in August. You have to move on. They have t-shirts that they wear at practice. This is the time they need it. It's hard to be unbothered when you're facing Maddie Skinner. Yeah, and you know where the ball's going to go, too, right? Everybody knows in the gym they're trying to get the ball to Maddie Skinner when they can, and she's still able to go high hands, cross court, and place this ball deep in the court. Saved by Barnes. Asia O'Neill. There it is. Becca Alec and Merritt Beeson. Good defensive stop by Nebraska. This is a transition ball from off the net. Maddie Skinner tries to turn it down the line. Merritt Beeson all over that for Nebraska. It's the fifth block for Nebraska. This is a team that had double figure blocks in each of its last two matches. Texas has worked around that block. That's the best the slide has looked all day. Asia O'Neill, we call her the slide queen, and there was a good connection there. The set before Swindle's slide to Asia O'Neill came off the net, and she was not able to get on top of it. Skinner behind the service line had a career high six aces in the semifinals. And on another for Maddie. That is 11 aces for Texas today. And if you're Nebraska, you want to side out as quickly as possible against their best servers. Maddie Skinner obviously is one of them. Don't give them unnecessary confidence here. Side out, put this ball on top of Bergen Riley's head if you can. Skinner has 15 aces in the tournament, two today. Batenhorst, it's long, no touch. 
But Bergen Riley has to bump set that ball. Nebraska out of system, out of system. That's the theme right now, and you have to look at the Texas serve, the pressure that it's put on this Nebraska team. Out of system, meaning Nebraska doesn't have all three options. Bergen Riley's choices are limited on who she can set. Tight to the net, goes to her middle with Andy Jackson. Here you see a great pass in system, so Riley can set whoever she pleases. She runs Andy Jackson on a quick one tempo set. She's able to go cross court for the kill. If you can get the pass, you can go to your middles who are naturally gonna hit for a higher percentage. Winnis is blocked by Bergen Riley. Really nice job there by Nebraska. Much of what we've seen, Lady Joeboy absolutely loves it on the sidelines of forcing Texas out of system so you know that ball is going to go to the outside pin. You can set up a great block. Look for Maddie Skinner out of the back row right now. This is a rotation for Texas. Set her front row. Service error. So here steps back Asia O'Neill. She led them on an 11-0 run in the second set, had four aces in a row. There used to be a time where middle blockers weren't the greatest servers. I mean, what she did was remarkable, and then she plays great defense as well and left back. And the service error. And if you're Nebraska, you absolutely love that. Yes, sigh of relief. I definitely think there's a trend that middle blockers are taking pride in their serve. We're seeing it across the country, mm -hmm. high-level middle, middle blockers from the service line. Skinner, back row. Lexi Rodriguez hustling, Harper Murray diving into the table! Nebraska keeps going! it down, but the absolute fearless guts from Harper Murray. What pursuit from Nebraska. Way to stick in there, Lexi Rodriguez. Unfortunately, they just can't seal the net here when Bella Bergmark is able to attack this over, but just great defensive hustle from the Cornhuskers. And sometimes pursuit plays like that, even though they didn't get the point, can be a momentum shift. And it's the effort, right? You instill that effort, that energy to your teammates and Harper Murray getting things done. 27 in white. Harper Murray, the number one overall recruit in this class. She was the Gatorade National Player of the Year. Her older sister, Kendall, plays at Michigan, also wears 27 in honor of their late father. Winnis off hands. We have not talked enough about Jenna Winnis. We talked about her earlier being the X Factor. She's had a solid match. Eight kills on 23 swings, hitting 261. She's doing a nice job finding high hands. Out of system set from Halter. She's able to tool the block outside the court of play. She did have her career high against Nebraska back when she was playing at Minnesota in 2021. Oh, Maddie Skinner, give her 15. <laughs> 15 kills for Skinner, the rest of Texas 13. Wow. Murray offhand, saved by Barnes. Rodriguez puts it up in the air. Just enough hesitation. How about the defense? Carissa Barnes sticks out her left arm. It pops right up to Swindle. A little bit of mistiming, but hang time pays off for Bella Bergmark in the middle. Four to one run for Texas. That hits the Lions <laughs> judge, so it's out. Again, a win for Texas. They win a national championship. Nebraska has to win this set in order to extend the match. 
Both of these teams with multiple NCAA titles. Nebraska has five. Last one coming in 2017. Texas, the defending champ. And Maddie Skinner wants another. It feels like she jumps higher as the match goes on. She's able to go over top of the block in front of her. Corner to corner, deep in the court between two great defenders. Just great placement. Maddie Skinner told us when she transferred from Kentucky to Texas, she was trying to find her love for volleyball again. She has found it in the burnt orange. That time the block gets the best of Skinner. Harper Murray turns that ball back. She's the right side blocker on that rotation defensively. Phillips. Oh, what a cut shot. Molly Phillips is so precise with her attack. Her attacking percentage has gone up all season long. But watch her hand contact on this ball. She trained some beach volleyball last summer, and it pays off with the cut shot from the right side. Tooling Asia O'Neill and Maddie Skinner. And that's somebody, if you're Bergen Riley, that you want to get going. You want Merritt Beeson to get hot on that right side pin. Great job using the block to her advantage there to tool. And Merritt Beeson is the vocal leader of this young mm -hmm. Nebraska team. She and Lexi Rodriguez co lead together. She only has three kills in this match, hitting under 100. Batenhorst, stopped by Asia O'Neill. Texas the first to fifth earlier in the match, so now she has the yellow card warning. Our national championship here in Tampa, Florida. Texas won the title last year, trying to repeat. And Ella Swindle, the freshman setter with the throwdown. Tough serve, out of system play, pops right over the net, and Swindle able to score with open net. We saw Texas's confidence soar in set two. They went on an 11-0 run. They totally dominated Nebraska, who hit negative in that set, and they have not taken their foot off the gas. is a high-level blocker on that left side. Even though she was working through some offensive troubles early in the season, this is one of her best skills. You see her up, over, closing that seam. Jared Elliott cannot say enough good things about Jenna Winnes. She has put in the work every day, extra reps in the gym. Her teammates have seen that work, and it's showing up in the tournament. Swindle's in the front row for Texas as a setter, and she's just done a really nice job making heads-up plays. I like that Bergen Riley goes back to Merritt Beeson, but all you got to do is just kind of punch this ball deep in the court over top of the defender's head. But I feel like balls are popping right in the direction of Texas in good locations, and they're able to execute. It's a 10-4 run for the Longhorns. They'll get a free ball back. In comes the slide, Queen! The service pressure from Texas is ridiculous, and it allows Texas to stay in system and run Asia O'Neill on that great slide. She's so dynamic off of one foot. I, right time, and this team, we've seen it. How much does that have to do with Maddie Skinner's confidence growing, too? Well, I think as she's grown, this team has grown with her. That's evident. Skinner with 15 kills to lead Texas. She's behind the service line. They're on a 5-0 run. And Allie Batenhorst, the kill Nebraska needed. 
That's only her second kill on 13 swings, still hitting negative for Nebraska. Watch Maddie Skinner out of the back row, most likely a Bic out of the middle, or Asia O'Neill in the slide. Merritt Beeson has a really nice serve. If she can get something going, a little bit of a run here for Nebraska, you start to steal back some momentum. Swindle on the slide. Still up. O'Neill thought it was down. Swindle's going to dump it. Excellent defensive play by Bergen Riley to keep it alive. And then Texas, perfect location on their first contact. And Ellis Swindle calls her own number, throws it down. Texas is hitting 400 in this set. Nebraska, 062. There's some blood on the court. They're taking a look at Merritt Beeson's leg. Nebraska's opponent hit percentage in this tournament was 098 coming in. Texas is hitting 239 right now. Beeson blocked. Look at Winnis go. Winnis is having a great match, not just offensively, but defensively as well. And I, I truly believe confidence is contagious. And when you've got pin hitters that are blocking like this, taking some of that pressure off of the middle blockers as well, it's a huge help defensively at the net. Nebraska will use its final timeout in this set. They are down to match for the match. This is a Nebraska team that hits 278 on the season. Asia O'Neill serving. Baton Horst. Swindle to Maddie Skinner. 16 kills for Maddie Skinner. If you're Texas, you know she's on your side of the net. We talked about her out of the back row. She is just unstoppable today. Taken over as the leader of this team. So close to back-to-back -to -back titles. Saved by Asia O'Neill with one off. Sometimes there are days where everything you touch turns to gold, and it feels like one of those days for Texas. Asia O'Neill making plays defensively for this team, just keeping it alive, and Wynn is throwing the ball over deep to the corner. A 14-4 run right now for Texas. Nebraska, for the entirety of the season, has been the best team in college volleyball. To see what Texas has done to the number one overall seed is nothing short of dominant. For the championship. Just like last year, back to back on an ace for Texas. Your national champion.